I'm very blessed to have a platform to share things with people. I wanted to spend a few minutes today and share with you the dangers of not protecting yourself from the sun. What's up, everyone? Um, I wanted to spend a, a couple of minutes today uh, to uh, review some of the um, dangers that lurk in not protecting uh, your skin from, from the sun. So in a little bit during this video, I'll put a, a couple of pictures up and kind of explain a little bit more in detail, at least from the best of my ability. So for the third time today, or from the, for the third time in my life um, at, at 42 years old, I have had uh, a basal cell carcinoma uh, cut off of my face. Uh, two of them in the same spot uh, on the nose and, and one up here at the, the corner of my eye and I had another one on the top of my forehead. Now a lot of you may think it's no big deal um, but it will kill you and, and it will take out organs and it will take out uh, whatever is, is, is close to that location. So the one I had cut out today uh, was right near my right eye. Um, it was growing towards my eye, and thank goodness they were able to get it out before it reached my eye, or I would have lost my eye. So what is um, a basal cell carcinoma? And I also had a squamous cell carcinoma in the same place. So what, what are these things? Um, they, they're, they're a type of skin cancer that can metastasize, I mean grow, um, and, and sometimes grow relatively quickly. Uh, and the one I had for the second time on my nose uh, was doing that and growing t towards my right eye rapidly. So my entire life, I have been a competitive tennis player, uh, born into the game, spent thousands of hours uh, in the sun. Um, if I wasn't playing tennis, if there was anything with a board attached to it, surfboard, skateboard, wakeboard, uh, skis, anything I could attach a board to my feet, uh, I was on that as well, uh, mostly Southern California. And you know it can get hot and, and it can cook you out there. Uh, my father always told me, Justin, wear a wide brim hat. Wear a wide brim hat. He was military, a uh, physician in the military, and a lot of times he wasn't able to be home. Uh, and sometimes I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't wear a hat. So um, what happens is the skin treats um, sun um, like an infection in a way. Uh, the melanin in your skin uh, helps to protect you. Um, some Sometimes people aren't as prone to these skin cancers as others. Uh, some people are very prone. Uh, my wife Carla is not um, as prone per se, but it doesn't matter what skin color you are, uh, what complexion you are. It's just a matter of when and if you will get it. Um, so the sun is, is cumulative. The damage that you get, uh, you can't reverse it. So uh, the thousands of hours I've spent in the sun have accumulated and, and these skin cancers keep popping up on my face. So it's been kind of a, um, a, a, an interesting past few months for me. I ruptured my patellar tendon, broke my wrist, uh, and now for the third time I've had a, a metastasizing, uh, a moving basal cell carcinoma uh, moving towards my eye. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a couple pictures up on the screen um, and kind of show you what this process looked like and how invasive it was. And then I'll kind of um, end it with, um, with some more thoughts um, and some ideas of how to protect yourself from the sun. Uh, I'm doing this because, again, it's, it's a blessing to have a platform to talk to people on and people that watch it or, or may not watch it. But I feel like it's my duty um, to, to share um, something that is very beneficial to everyone's health, and that is to protect your skin. So I'll throw some pictures up, uh, kind of talk about them, um, and, and then I'll end it with some positive energy, maybe a song at the end. All right? So the black, um, what's called a shield that's in my eye is to protect my eye from when the scalpel is so close to my eye. The wound was the first um, incision that they made and they had to go back in multiple times to get it all out. And here I am stitched up. So you can see it's definitely an invasive procedure and, and we can thank nobody but the sun for this. So I'll kind of explain um, how this went down. All right, so hopefully you didn't uh, think those pictures were too bad. Well, the question I get a lot is, well, how do you know uh, if you have something like this? Uh, well, the first time I had it, I didn't know. And my father, again, a retired physician, noticed a lump on my nose. Um, and that lump kind of looked like a, just a slightly raised, about as big as a pea, just an area on, on the nose. And it would bleed every once in a while if I scratched my nose and it would, and it would heal and then it would start all back over. But... I never really paid it much attention. Uh, he saw it, and this was about 10 years ago, actually. So I had my first one at around 30 years of age, 42 now, and they're really starting to kind of pile on. Um, so I had that one removed the same way, but how did I know I had this one? 
Well, um, I really didn't at first. Uh, I'm a tennis coach, so, so I'm in the sun all the time. And I have since now uh, began to wear a wide brim hat all the time. I try not to leave home without it. Um, but there was a point in time where I was feeding underhanded balls uh, to one of my sons. Um, the ball accidentally shanked off of his frame and it hit me right in the eye. And I had a pair of sunglasses on and it put a wound on my face right on my nose in the same area. And for the longest time, I had this little area that would continue um, to kind of raise up. It was really small. Um, it looked like a, a, maybe a small little pimple that would never have a, you know, a top on it. It was just like a little red area. Um, and, it, and it would kind of heal, um, and, and then it would kind of come back, and then it would heal, and then it would kind of come back. So uh, I, I was just, um, I, I was, I was at, at, at some point, um, I, I ruptured my patellar tendon, and because I was always wearing those sunglasses in the sun, I kind of figured, well, the reason why this spot won't heal is because my sunglasses sit right on that spot, and I kind of ignored it. So I guess the blessing is, is when I blew my knee out and had surgery on it, uh, I went a couple of months. Uh, without being in the sun because I was immobilized. I couldn't walk at all. I couldn't get out of bed for a month and a half. Um, and I was still going through the same pattern. It would raise, it would bleed, it would raise. Uh, maybe it wouldn't bleed and it just wouldn't go away. So lo and behold, I had it biopsied, which means I had that little piece of skin tested. Um, and I got a call from um, the physician that did it and indicated that it was a fast-moving basal cell carcinoma and I needed to have work done on it immediately. So how do they get it out? Well, what, what they do is you go to what's called a Mohs surgeon, M-O-H-S, Mike Oscar Hotel Sierra, um, and you get into a chair and they don't put you to sleep. Um, normally they would, but because of the length of time, you don't wanna be anesthetized that, that long. So they deaden the facial area, the, the entire face, uh, and they remove um, a portion of different layers of skin, uh, very deep. Um, you can tell that by the pictures and the swelling that's that's already be, uh, be, begin to start. So, um, so they remove that. They go to a lab, and, and you sit there. A nurse stays with you. So when the uh, lidocaine wears off, um, they can reinject the areas around your face, um, and then the doctor will come back in and find out if the margins are clear. Margins, um, in medical terms, are if we remove. Um, a, 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 um, a skin cancer or any type of cancer, say that's this big, um, and uh, or not this big, but let's say they cut an area out of your face and it's growing underneath the skin, and sometimes it's like an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is is, is what's you know extending out of the skin, and and the cancer is underneath the skin. So they'll take off the visible part, they'll put it under a microscope and find out if uh, the cancer cells are growing and in which direction underneath the skin. So they did that today at first. Uh, they came back in and said, "Hey, you know, this is it's, it's growing. I haven't gotten it all, um, so I had to have more and more cut out until um, the dermatologist, or in this case, plastic surgeon, comes in and says, "Okay, the margins are clear, meaning we've cut out all the I like, I like to say meat, but cut out all the layers of skin, um, so the cancer cells now are, are are all gone, and then they stitch you back up." So that, that's kind of how it goes. And again, this is the third time it's happened, once here and then twice here. And it's really not a fun experience. And if you, and if you don't catch it early, um, it will kill you. It will definitely kill you. And if not, take out every organ that it hits along the way. So I urge everyone uh, to wear a wide brim hat. Now, I know on our tennis talk shows, I always have my Federer hat on, um, which gives you zero protection um, on the ears, on the neck, uh, sides of the face, anything. And I shouldn't do that. Um, at least wear it on the show. I should wear a wide brim hat on the show. A fact, in fact, I want to get some 5K tennis shirts made. I mean, some 5K tennis hats made that are wide brim, kind of like this. So, yeah, th does it look the best? No. Uh, but will it save your life potentially? Yes. Um, so I think I'm going to do something like this with the 5K tennis logo on it. So I'm going to design something and put it together. Uh, but I urge everyone to protect the skin. It doesn't matter who you are, how old you are. When you get older in life, um, if you've had enough sun exposure, you will pay the price. And if you don't catch it early, um, it will ultimately kill you. Um, so uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what type of hat you wear and what anyone else thinks. Um, I have worn this hat on numerous occasions in the sun. Um, and again, I could care less about what anybody thinks because going through this type of, of procedure is definitely not fun. Um, so uh, anyway, um, I, I hope that this is somehow informative to, to, to all of you out there. Um, uh, and, and please protect the skin. It's definitely not a fun deal. 
Um, if you have questions about it, let me know. Um, I was in surgery all morning, so no tennis show today. Um, Carla is with my two oldest boys uh, at, a, at a tournament. They play number one and two on their high school team, so they're going to face a tough opponent today. So hopefully they play well. I was advised to stay here and keep my blood pressure down in, in case the stitches um, would come apart uh, or ooze because of elevated uh, blood pressure. So anyway, I'm going to end this. Um, I'm going to end this with one of my favorite songs that that kind of motivates me when I'm kind of down and out, feeling like I'm getting old and gray, and you know my body's breaking apart. So it always energizes me. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it. Take care. Much love. Protect the skin. Um, stay positive. Um, and if you have any questions or if this has affected you or you think it might be, um, again, I'm no doctor, but maybe I can uh, assist you um, in one way, shape, or form. So take care, everyone. Much love. Mwah. Vamos. Um, let's go. And, and uh, I look forward to the next tennis show. Take care, everyone. Enjoy the tune. Strangers to places if you look at it right